Hey you guys, I thought I'd make you another um, tutorial. This one uh, is going to be about conditional value lists. It's uh, somewhat a little bit of a tricky thing that some people have uh, difficulty with um, and I'm going to try and see if I can maybe make it a little bit clearer for you guys. The idea is uh, very simple as follows. This is supposed to be an invoice. I can select a date, I can select a client and I can add products. Um, sometimes you might have a lot of products and you would want to first uh, select the category and then uh, for instance uh, parts and then you want to see only the products that belong to that category for instance in this case you could have mirrors but if you select another category you would have different products here uh, in my accessories see again I got different products here that I can select from um, this is a good technique if you want to make your value list a little bit more manageable because otherwise it could be if you don't have this one that your value list here becomes really big but and then you would have a situation kind of like this where you just select your product and not your category if you select this um, value list you will get gloves you will get a helmet you will get motorcycles you will get scooters everything will be together in one list which might seem like a bad idea but but the good thing about this system is, and I actually prefer this system uh, because this way, what you can do in this little drop down box is you can start typing, like for instance if I would like to have a helmet, I type an H and my helmet gets selected. If I want to have a hog, I type HO and my hog is already selected. I can just hit enter and enter again and I have my product selected and this way you can just uh, add stuff really really quickly to your uh, invoice if you're adding a bunch of products and you know the names of those products I think this technique is still the best way to add lots of products uh, products really fast but if you would like this technique where you select a um, category first and then you select a product from that category if you want to know how that is done please keep watching Let's see what we need to make this work in terms of uh, of tables and fields, etc. Let's go to check out our tables. We have four tables, very simply. We have our products, we have our invoices, our line items, which will be the products we add to our invoice, and we have our clients table. Let's look at what fields we have in there. Uh, in every single table, I have an ID field, which is a number field with an auto enter serial option. Uh, which is pretty basic, which you always need in every single table. And in this uh, client ta uh, table, I just made it really basic, a first and a last name, and I made a calculation that calculates the first name plus a space and the last name together, so you get the full name of the client. Uh, the next one, let's go uh, to the products, which is very basically, again, as always, an ID. There is a category which is a text field, the product name is a text field, and the price is a number. Very simple, very basic. Invoices is even simpler, as always an ID. I have a date field and I have the client ID FK field where we will store the ID of the client that is uh, uh, re uh, related to this invoice that's supposed to be paying this invoice. Our line items table is very simple as well, but a few more fields, uh, an ID as always. An invoice ID FK field, which is the foreign key for the invoice ID, um, which is a simple number field. Our category in line items is a text field, where we will st uh, store the category. Then I have a product ID FK field, which is a number field. Um, where we will be storing the ID of the product that we are selling. Then the amount uh, is simple number field because uh, we want to maybe select uh, or sell multiple uh, items or of that product. We have a price lookup field and this is a pretty important one. Um, if we have a list of products then um, the price is stored in the products table. Uh, we could get our price from that product table but the tricky thing is then you could be doing uh, your business for an entire year making all kinds of invoices that all get paid and then all of a sudden if you make a price change uh, then those prices would also change on your old invoices the ones that have already been paid and you of course do not want that to happen so what you need to do if you make an invoice, uh, your price 
uh, of the product that you add needs to be looked up at the moment that you add that product and the price that that product has at that moment in time needs to be saved in a uh, in a separate field uh, so that if you change the product price later on that will that change will not be made on any of your old invoices so very important your price lookup needs to be a lookup field and if you want we can have a look at the settings here that says an auto enter looked up value if you go to specify you will see that we start with table line items that's the table we're on we want to look up from a related table so you do have to make sure that you make that relationship first and the related table is the products table and we're going to look up the price from the products table and we're going to store that in the price lookup field in our line items table so very important if you do an invoicing in your line items make sure your price is a lookup the total is very simply it's a very simple calculation that calculates the amount multiplied by the price uh, that gives you a total and then you get a sum total which is a summary field that uh, calculates the total of your total field so you can know what the total for a specific invoice is I think we've seen all the uh, fields let's have a look at our relationship very simple our client ID is related to our invoice client ID FK field very simple because every invoice uh, belongs to one certain client every invoice can have multiple line items so the invoice ID is linked to the invoice ID FK field in our line items table and our products ID is related to our products ID FK field in our line items table as well so if we do do that one we get our basic uh, very simple layout but let's uh, just for show let's create this one again let's start a new layout from scratch invoices lay, lay invoice I think I've already made a few so let's give this one a number okay let's hit next current table is going to be our invoice table let's add a date and let's add the client IDFK let's choose a nice looking theme and there we go very simple our uh, basic invoice layout let's uh, make this layout a little bit bigger and let's add a portal for our line items portal is up here uh, show related records from line items that's correct let's allow deletion and show vertical scroll bar let's add category product IDFK amount price lookup and total that's the ones we're gonna need I'm, I'm gonna want to add the sum total as well later on on this layout but I'm gonna want to put it outside of the portal so let's not add that one now and let's add it later if you want you can add a few labels on the top here so that it becomes a little bit more clear in here uh, what we're looking at because this is not so very clear let's do that if you are not getting any ability to create uh, line items here and if you're just getting like I'm getting now a big white box then you have to uh, apply one more setting to your relationship you gotta go to file manage database and you have to uh, uh, edit the relationship between your invoices and your line items table here by double clicking this one and then you have to on the side of the line items table you have to allow creation of records in this table via this relationship meaning you have to allow the creation of line items and you could also check this one delete um, related records or delete line items in this table when a invoice is deleted in the other table could be handy because if you delete an invoice uh, the line items become uh, orphaned records anyway so this is a pretty good one um, to check in this case okay let's see if this is better okay now I can add stuff here uh, I can uh, start entering information so don't forget to apply that setting okay so I've added a few labels on the top here let's also quickly copy this one down here that's control drag and then let's make this one the sum total let's create a label and let's make this one total there you go looking good okay so we have our simple basic invoice our line items now we need to start adding stuff 
The first one is going to be a very simple category. This can be a simple drop down list. Let's make a value list. I already have it here, but let's check it out. Um, what it is. It's called categories. It, it's got use values from field, and the field is going to be very simply products, and I'm going to be using the field category. I'm going to include all values, and if I do that, let's see what we have. Here I will get a drop down with all of my categories. I have four categories right now. I can select one, uh, whichever one, and then um, <clears throat> the next step is of course to make our conditional value list or value list that is dependent on uh, this condition. How do we do that? Uh, basically what we would want now is to get our product list as well but only showing the products from this category. How do we do that? Let's go and look here in File Manage Database and the trick is going to be to create a new table occurrence. Now for those who are not used to that, you do that by selecting a uh, table if you will and clicking these two double green plus signs here and if you do that you see that you get a second box. That's also the reason that I gave this one a color. You can do that by selecting it and going to this box here. Normally it's gray if you look like this uh, at here. I can select my clients, I go to this little gray box here and I may give it a color there. The reason I give my, my, my tables colors is that if you make a copy then that one has the same color and you can vi very easily visually see which ones belong together, basically come from the same table. The trick is here that we did not create a second table. We have products and products too and you might be thinking why do I want a second product table? Well you don't have a second product table. Your tables are created here and if you go and have a look you still have four tables and you have one product table and not two. But if you look at the end here you will see occurrences in graph. You will see that you have products and products too. So you have two occurrences in your relationship graph, two occurrences of one single table. And if you go back to your relationships and you go to the top left here of your uh, table occurrence, then you will see that the source table here is products and here the source table is also products. So very important to remember I did not make a second table, I just made a second table occurrence, the second occurrence of that same table. The reason that I would do something like this is so that I could make a different kind of relationship because here you have the products, they are related to our line items but I would like to make a different kind of relationship. So first of all what I'm gonna do is, and that's always very important, is to give your uh, table occurrence, excuse me, a uh, clear name Basically, from this table occurrences, I will only get the products that I have uh, for which I have already selected a category in the line items table. So, this is going to be named something like product um, selected category. That way, we know that this is only going to be displaying the products from the selected category. Um, what kind of relationship would I like to make? Well, very simple. In my line items table, I'm going to select a category and that category, um, well, the products I want to see, they need to be from that category. So basically, the category here needs to be equal to the category here. So very simple, very simple relationship. We just drag the category to the category here and then we have created well, basically this has a different relationship to this, to this table occurrence than this one has. So, now what we can do is we can base our value list off of this one. And if you have a close look, then basically our line items category needs to be equal to our uh, category from the products table occurrence. Let's see how this works in here. Let's edit our layout. Let's go to product. Let's make this a drop down list. Let's make a new one. And let's call this one products from selected category. There. We're going to use values from a field. And the big trick is, of course, which field? Well, the products selected category field and not, or table and not the normal products table. Um, I have my product ID FK field here, which means I'm going to be storing the ID. So I need to select as a first field here the ID. 
and the second field will be our product name because we don't really want to see an ID in our drop down we want to see the product name I'm going to show values only from second field because I only want to see the product name and not this one but very important to make this value list work I'm not going to include all values because then I'll, I'll be seeing all of my products I'm going to include only related values starting from our line items table if we do this we will only see the ones from the selected category or at least I hope that that works let's try it out we have our parts selected so let's see uh -huh. only mirrors in the parts category Let's select another category, motorcycles, and then I get a hog and a raptor, and from scooters I get another kind of product selection here. So, basically, it's not that difficult if you know how it's done, um, but of course the trick lies in the file manage database, creating that extra table occurrence, creating the correct relationship in between here, and then basing your value list on this table occurrence and not on this one, and then of course the settings for your value list very important uh, let's review them again once more um, let's uh, very important to include only related values starting from the line items that's a really important one to select otherwise and this is not going to work so very basic very simple we select our scooters and we only get those um, if you guys have any more questions, if you would like to me to show this a little bit more in depth, uh, you guys can always ask me a question in the comments. But for now, I think this is it. Just remember that the annoying thing here is that you first have to select a category and you cannot select a product if you don't select a category first. So if you do prefer the faster method, which should be here if it's still working, um, this is really a faster one if you want to um, quickly enter stuff um, using a value list that shows all of your uh, all of your products this is quicker to enter but the other one might be a little bit more organized uh, as well uh, one more thing you might be noticing here the annoying product uh, IDs that you don't want showing up if you wanna uh, remedy that you just gotta control drag this field let's call this one uh, products uh, product name let's not create a label and then let's change a few settings this one isn't going to be an edit box it's not going to be available in browse mode but it is going to be available in find mode and this one will be in browse mode but not in find mode um, and this one can really stay a drop down list let's select both of them align the top and left there so they're on top of each other and then you will see uh, here you do not see um, the ID but you do see the name let's add another one parts mirrors and you will see the IDs here are still showing up but they're not here and this is actually a FileMaker bug really annoying but it's very easy to fix you just have to know how and I know how go to edit layout select this uh, field here and nudge one pixel to the left or to the right doesn't really matter and then if you go back to your exit layout you will see that now it does work and it's just a really simple bug uh, you will see that your line here has become thicker which you don't want so but basically you're just gonna go back and place this one back to where it was just nudge it back one pixel in the other direction and you just move it before exit layout and you see from now on it will work it's a bug, it's really annoying, but it's, it's, if you know uh, how to fix it, then it's not really a big deal. So from now on, you can just select a category and then get only the products from that category. I hope this was helpful. If not, let me know. Ciao.